Americans, we have rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. We have legally protected rights and freedoms that doesn't limit all the rights and freedoms that we have. But as Americans, we do have the right to habeas corpus, the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the right to peacefully assemble, the right to petition, the freedom of religion, and away from establishing a state religion. We have the right to keep and bear arms, the right to deny soldiers in our house for their quartering, right to be protected from unreasonable searches and seizures, right to have a grand jury indictment before any capital punishment can be imposed except for the military ban on double jeopardy, right to remain silent, right to be paid for any property the government takes away, right to life, liberty, and property, the right to due process. For criminal cases, we have a right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury in the court of the proper jurisdiction. We have a right to be told of the charges. So join with me in this campaign. Lend Senator Eagleton and me your strength and your support, and together we will call America home to the ideals that nourished us from the very beginning. We do not uh, have the right to refrain from war. We don't have a freedom from war. We don't have a right to our own body. These are not codified. These are not legally protected by the U.S. Constitution. We don't have a right to security. We don't have a right to fair elections. We don't have a right to revolution. We don't have a right to democracy. Corporations are people in our society for some reason. We don't have the freedom of movement. The rule of law is not a principle that has been codified. So the Constitution doesn't protect the freedom of thought, the freedom of expression, doesn't protect workers' rights, tenant rights. There is no ban on gerrymandering. Hell, just give me the right to gerrymander, and I care not who makes the laws. There's no ban on gerrymandering. We don't have a right to asylum. We cannot prohibit a president from pardoning their predecessor. We don't have a right to health care. Secrecy and deception in high places come home, America on poll taxes. Amendment 24 bans poll taxes. The presidency is only limited to just two terms. That's the 22nd Amendment. For American adults over 21, we have the right to drink alcohol. You have a right. That is a right that's enshrined in our Constitution. You got, if you're over 21, nobody can take that alcohol out of your hands. The right to vote for senators by popular vote that's the 17th Amendment. All Americans over 18 years of age have a right to vote, regardless of any sort of distinction. That's the 15th, 19th, and 26th Amendment. All Confederates are banned from ever serving in government. So all those people waving Confederate flags, take a picture of them because they are not allowed to serve in American government. If you were a Confederate, that means you're treasonous, traitor. You want to take up arms against the United States of America? Yeah, so you cannot serve in government in America. From military spending so wasteful that it weakens our nation, come home, America. A right to shelter. We don't have a right to food. We don't have a right to water. No wonder Nestle, the corporations, right, the people that is called corporations want to steal our water, clothing, bed, oxygen. We don't have a right to oxygen. We don't have a right to uh, health care, we don't, we, freedom from want, freedom from poverty, we don't have a right to work, a right to education, a right to culture, freedom from homelessness. I mean, this is the land of plenty, but, you know, maybe that's the incentive, right? If you don't want to be homeless, you better go out there and hustle. We don't have the presumption of innocence isn't codified, the right to play, the right to have a cool boat. What, that ain't a right? I deserve a right to have a cool boat, and even if, you know, that's a joke, but it kind of shows you, you know, what's rights, what aren't freedoms. Um, I do have a right for everybody to say, hey, man, looking cool there, Mr. F motherfucking Starboy. <laughs> I want everybody saying that to me every morning. I got a right. From the entrenchment of special privilege and tax favoritism, from the waste of idle hands to the joy of useful labor, from the prejudice based on race and sex, from the loneliness of the aging poor and the despair of the neglected sick. Come home, America. Come home to the affirmation that we have a dream. Come home to the conviction that we can move our country forward. Come home to the belief that we can seek a newer world. And let us be joyful in the homecoming. For this land is your land. 
This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Citizens have equal protection of the law. So if you I live in Colorado, so therefore all the laws of Colorado that goes to all the citizens equally. All citizens have equal protection of the law. That's the 14th Amendment. If one is born on U.S. soil, that's all it takes to become an American. You don't have to pass a test. You don't need to know about the three branches of government. You don't need to know about jack shit, really. As long as you was born on this soil, and then one of the 50 nifty United States, and then or one of the military bases, then you're an American, and you're entitled to all the privileges and immunities of American citizenship. That's the 14th Amendment. Also, slavery is banned. You cannot hold anybody under enslavement. The Amendment 9 does say that there's natural, inherent human God-given rights are always protected. And I'll mention some the cruel and unusual punishments are banned. You cannot torture, but we don't ban torture just... So let us close on this note. May God grant each one of us the wisdom to cherish this good land and to meet the great challenge that beckons us home. And now is the time to meet that challenge. Good night and Godspeed to you all. Natural inherent human rights. Nobody can take away our natural human rights. They're given to us by God. God's given us these rights meaning that we are naturally endowed with them. We don't need any laws to actually write them down. But which one of these rights are human rights and one of these rights, you know, a right to a boat, that's, a little, that's more of a privilege, right? That's not a right. But a right to not be beaten up, not to be tortured, a right to ban forced sterilization. You can't go around sterilizing groups of people, ban forced amputation, ban chemical castration. We need to clear a separation of church and state right to not be imprisoned for debts, right to one's bodily integrity, freedom from police brutality, the right to organize and unionize, the right to strike, the right to privacy, the right to marriage and family, including gay folks. So are those human rights, right to privacy, right to marriage, right to organize? Grandfather was a factory worker, a father was a small business person, and now asking the people of America to elect me president that are codified and protected for criminal cases, we have a right to be confronted by the witnesses against us. If somebody says, blah, 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 did this, they can't just say it and then hide underneath the cover. You have to go in front of court and you have to say, that person did this thing to me. And that's Amendment 6. So the a right to due process, right to compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in one's favor for criminal cases. A criminal case is that which the state brings against you by a prosecutor, by a judge, by a cop. So the state brings criminal cases, civil cases as citizen v. citizen, uh, usually suing people for money, but not always. So for criminal cases, you have to have the witnesses, uh, you have to have the witnesses confront the person that they're accusing. The accused can call any witnesses on the planet that they want to call. And the court has to, you know, bring the witness in because they have a right to uh, obtain witness. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And I know how to find common ground, and I know how to stand my ground. A lot of Americans get together and they're saying, oh, no, the Bible says this, no, oh, the Bible says that, no, oh, the Bible, but nobody gets together and says, this is human rights. No, these aren't human rights. So if we have that discussion, we have natural inherent rights, and you can't take those natural inherent rights away. But I think that they should be codified. We should write down all the freedoms and all the rights and, you know, uh, add to our list of freedoms. Some of the amendments have nothing to do with freedom and rights. In fact, the Bush administration was trying to ban gay marriage, so they was actually trying to take rights and freedoms away. There's lots of problems with the U.S. Constitution. The biggest crime, the only crime actually in the Constitution is treason, and that's taking up arms against the government or giving aid and comfort to our enemies you know, somebody who's taken up arms against the government. That's the only crime. So what about murder and rape? <laughs> and, you know, stealing and assault, but murder and rape? That's not listed as a crime? I'm pretty and I have proved that in every position that I've had, even dealing with Republicans who 
never had a good word to say about me, honestly. But we found ways to work together on everything from reforming okay. foster care and adoption to the Children's Health Insurance Program, which Thank insures you. 8 million kids. So I have a long history of getting things done rooted in the same values Senator I've always had. To a lawyer in criminal cases, so the accused have a whole set of rights in the Sixth Amendment. So the accused, you have to tell them why you captured them and threw them in prison, which is kind of a habeas corpus kind of thing. You have a right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury in the proper uh, jurisdiction. So the uh, right to be confronted by witnesses, right to get witnesses in your favor, right for a lawyer for civil cases with matters over $20 in controversy, a right to a trial by jury is protected. That's the Seventh Amendment and for civil cases. So anything that's over 20 bucks, somebody, you know, fucks you over $100, you have the right to a trial by a jury. And they might say, well, money and cost, well, what the fuck am I paying my taxes for? Excessive bail, excessive fines is banned. The Eighth Amendment also bans cruel and unusual punishments, but not torture or, you know, death. Of the people of Lebanon and has little or no apparent support from the other 85%. Why do you suppose the government of Lebanon that's supposed to be loyal to, to President Jamal is surrendering and defecting to the other side? Is it our obligation to try to straighten out this incredibly complicated and long time uh, difference among the uh, people of that little country. The third step that I would take would be to invoke a freeze against any more cruel and unusual than death. It's pretty cruel, pretty unusual. We also don't rewrite the Constitution. We have to pass a law in order to scratch out like the 18th and the 21st Amendment. One was banning alcohol, the other one is undoing the ban of alcohol. So why don't we just say, you know, scratch out the 18th Amendment and make the 19th the 18th. So uh, in our Constitution, we still have the Fugitive Slave Clause. Black people are still considered three-fifths of a person. There's also the Slave Trade Clause. We're only going to have slave trade for another 20 years, but we're going to tax them, but not that much. Only $10 is all we're going to tax them. The fifth sentence is racist as fuck as soon as you get into the Constitution. The fifth sentence says black folks are three-fifths of a person, not for themselves, but for others, for the representation of the South. The South wanted to count the black folks in order to get more representatives in the House, but they didn't want black folks to actually be considered people. So, so let us stand for justice and jobs and against special privilege, and this is the time to stand for those things that are close to the American spirit. We are not content with things as they are. We reject the view of those who say, America, love it or leave it. The Constitution isn't a perfect document. One of the ways for peaceful revolution, there's two ways for peaceful revolution. One is you change the leadership, which you could do that. There's a potential for revolution with every election. So we can have a revolution by changing the leadership if the leadership actually does something different. If they're doing the same policies as before, well, that changes nothing. The other way is to have a constitutional convention. You rewrite the rules. If you ever played Bobby Fischer chess, you just take the back row of the players and you, you know, reassort them however you want to. Now, if both players agree, then that's still a fair game and it's more fun, more varied, lots more opportunities to do a lot more things. So... That is, you know, how a constitutional convention would work. You change the rules to the game. It's not, you're still fair. You made it more fun, more interesting. You brought more people in. You protected all the freedoms and rights, not just a few here and there. Hence the further construction of any nuclear weapons of any kind. Everyone here, no matter how young or how old, knows that if we didn't produce one single additional warhead, we have the capacity, if we just use 10% of the present nuclear arsenal, to destroy every living thing in the Soviet Union. They could do it to us, too. Each country lives because of the uh, restraint on the other side in unleashing this final war. But what is to be served in terms of George Washington isn't a great one. I don't want George Washington on my $1 bill. Now, he was considered a liberal for his time, so he was saying, hey, let's have a republic that we vote, at least the landowners, the white male landowners vote, 
and then we vote for the leadership and therefore the consent of the governed. So a republic, not a monarchy, not a hereditary monarchy, not kings and queens, not nobility, but instead of and by and for the people. So that was revolutionary for a republic. And then we barely got a Bill of Rights. But the Bill of Rights does actually enshrine our government, you know, for till the end of time. So the Bill of Rights said, yeah, they're going to have a centralized government. They're going to have this rule and that rule. But all the individuals of this country get to have these human rights. And then they made sure all the colonies had uh, passed them by convention. So the people themselves actually agreed. In terms of our own security, piling up these additional warheads at the rate of three or four a day, which is now going on in both the Soviet Union and the United States. Somebody has to break that cycle. Bringing forth the three branches of government, fighting tyranny to stop the hereditary monarchy, to have three centers of power, uh, to have a republic, to have a constitution. That's a contract between you and, you know, your government. And then the Bill of Rights on top of it. So, the, you know, the George Washington put used slave teeth. He didn't have wooden teeth. He bought teeth from one of his slaves. And I don't know where his slave would have got teeth from, unless it was from his own mouth or maybe from his wife's mouth. So Washington is a piece of shit, and I don't like him, but I hate the king even worse. <laughs> king George the Third, but it just went to King George the Fourth. But because he put a constitution, a republic, bill of rights, because he wrote that shit down, that enabled, you know, for the American people to kind of take this experiment on over. I have another 15 problems that I see with the... And I believe if the next president would order a halt to it, we would not jeopardize our security uh, in the slightest. If the Soviets want to continue this nonsense to their own economic bankruptcy, they do not weaken us. They're weakening only their own posture and the support of their own people. In any event, while pressing for a verifiable mutual freeze between the two countries, we ought in any event to have the common sense to stop. Allow for a central bank, a central United States bank. It doesn't seem, in fact, by having one bank, you won't have all these private banks competing. They just want to make a profit. And what is it, uh, usury, 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 usury? So I, I don't like the Federal Reserve. They act as a central people's bank, but let's just get a central people's bank. Uh, the 600,000 residents of Washington, D.C. have no congressional representation, so no senators, no representatives. That needs to change the uh, rights of a convicted felon who served their time. Their voting rights need to be restored. That should just be automatic. I can't believe it's not. It's, you know, just something uh, obviously logical that clearly should be put back into it. Clearly somebody overlooked this thing. We need to update the Constitution every, every time we add a new amendment. The 12th Amendment changed the portion of Article 2, Section 1, and then the 20th Amendment... Stop right now, adding to this surplus overkill that contributes nothing to the security of any American. I believe if we would take that step and then try to tighten up on the procurement of other weapons to develop a more efficient way of operating our national defense that we could save somewhere in the range of 20 uh, to 25 percent on what we're now spending on the military. For the amendment process and the constitutional conventions are just too damn high. The 16th amendment says that our income, our wages can be taxed but not rent or dividends or interest. So that's the rich people, right? Dividends, the rich people are collecting dividends, rents, and interest. And that's not allowed to be taxed. That should be taxed. If we don't tax that, then we need to abolish the 16th Amendment. We need to have term limits for senators and members of Congress. We need to add those. We need a Rights and Freedom Protection Bureau. We need to have some bureau that actually protects our rights. We also need to add a right to privacy, right to unionize, right to food, water, clothing, shelter, and a bed. We don't have the freedom of movement. I mean, we do. We're allowed to go. But if, you know, all of a sudden Colorado wants to put up walls and then just charge people for coming into this state, we're allowed to do that. But we have a right to gerrymander. That is not against the Constitution. Gerrymander all you want. Gerrymander. That would release the kind of money we need for other things that are important to the real strength and security of this country. And my fourth step would be to put people back to work doing things 
that would be useful and increase the prosperity and strength of our country. One thing, for example, we need in the United States is a modern system of rail transport and public transit facilities in our cities. Appeal the 11th Amendment, read it, it's absolutely, we're not as individuals allowed to use the federal courts to sue a state that we don't live in. There's 50 states, so I live in Colorado. I'm not allowed to use the federal courts to sue any other state, even if they did some injury to me. So we can't do that? As if how Hawaii couldn't injure me some way? The 18th and the 21st Amendments, they need to be, do we have a right to alcohol? I mean, that seems pretty silly. Let's just get rid of the 18th Amendment, sure, or, you know, if you're 21, you could drink war powers. The president, the commander-in-chief has too much power, and war hasn't been declared by Congress, which is the only body that can declare war since World War II, but yet we're an empire and we're bombing a million countries. We got all those Vietnams in Africa right now, so we need to get that, you know, pinned down. We need to abolish executive orders. It's straight-up tyranny. We need to abolish the Electoral College. It's straight-up uh, tyranny. Also, instant runoff voting. We talk about being number one. And in some respects, the United States is, but certainly not in railways, certainly not in public transportation facilities, but to make a commitment to give this country the best rail service that exists anywhere in the world by the end of this century would be a marvelous way to put hundreds of thousands of people back to work doing something uh, that is useful. Credit tools, which is actually what Colorado, the spirit of Colorado, because Colorado's got recall, initiative, and referendum. Referendum is the government puts an issue to the people to vote on. Initiative is the people put initiative to themselves to vote on. And then recall is you dirty rat, you said you were going to do some shit, but you broke the law, so we're going to recall your ass. It's throwing the politicians out of office before the end of their term or before they become a lame duck by somebody else uh, taking their, you know, winning an election and taking their seat. So the Electoral College is absolutely just a good... <laughs> It says you, you don't have a vote. There's only 400 people that actually can vote for the president. We should have government finance elections and campaigns. We should have a paper ballot for a paper trail. And then executive orders. I think we should ban all executive orders. You should only get 10, and if you have to do more than 10 in a year, then you're fired. You know, you just, the president gets fired after 11. If the MX missile's going to cost us $50 billion, and it probably will, with a similar cost to the B-1 bomber, I believe with all my heart that spending that hundred billions of dollars giving this country the world's best railway system would contribute vastly more to the defense and the security and the well-being of the American people and it would provide infinitely more jobs. Spending money on sophisticated military systems is the poorest way in the world to provide jobs. In the first place, it doesn't provide very many jobs and it's in an area that does not contribute much to the security and strength of our, our country. Fifth, we reply, let us change it so we may love it the more. And this is the time. It is the time for this land to become again a witness to the world for what is just and noble in human affairs. It is time to live more with faith and less with fear, with an abiding confidence that can sweep away the strongest barriers between us and teach us that we are truly brothers and sisters. We need to look at the uh, problems of the American farmer. Now, I know that most of the people in this room probably live in the city of Des Moines. Uh, you're not acquainted firsthand with the uh, problems of agriculture, but those who are, those of you who have grown up on the farms, you know that people both in the cities and on the farms have a vital interest in preserving our family farm type agriculture. It doesn't make any difference whether you're in Brooklyn or Chicago or Los Angeles or out here on an Iowa farm, preserving that soil that sustains life and enables us to talk about the United States as the bread basket of the world, that's a vital interest to everybody, at least everybody who eats. It's a vital interest to everyone that covets uh, a secure 
uh, future. We used to worry about the oil supply. It's even more important to worry about the source of our food, especially at a time when population growth all over the world is placing new uh, pressures on the available sources of land. Right here in Iowa, we're losing that precious topsoil that sustains life. We're losing it at the rate of 10 tons per acre every year. Uh, I know 100 years seems like a long time to somebody who's only 16 years old. It's not all that long. 100 years ago, the topsoil here in Iowa was twice as thick as it is today. At that rate, 100 years in the future, we won't be the breadbasket of the world anymore. We'll be a barren wilderness. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me.